You know, for many years, the existence of dinosaur fossils was thought to be a problem for creationists and for the biblical account of creation. Hi, my name is Eric, and what you're about to see is a powerful seminar that combines the last 30 years of research done by Dr. Hoven. It's in a field called cryptozoology, which is the study of hidden animals. The seminar is titled, Dinosaurs and the Bible. Welcome to our third uh, videotape, our session on dinosaurs and the Bible. And we'll just refresh for the folks that haven't been here yet. This is not my wife. That's just a picture of her. We live in Pensacola, Florida. We have three kids, all married, and the dog died. I made it. I'm home free. <laughs> it's wonderful. And all three of my kids work for me, and two grandkids, and more coming all the time. This fellow in National Pornographic, uh, Geographic, I mean, says, <clears throat> no human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Well now, hold on just a minute. Does he know that or does he think that? He thinks that. There's no way anybody can know that unless they talk to everybody that ever lived. Did he talk to you before he wrote that? Did he talk to Adam and Eve before he wrote that? I doubt it. He says nobody's ever seen. Well, he might believe that, but that's not part of science, folks. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the Bible says pretty clearly in Exodus 20, in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. What do you suppose he meant by that? He wrote that on a rock with his finger. That's part of the Ten Commandments. It looks to me like he's trying to tell us that he made it all in six days, which means Adam must have seen dinosaurs. The Bible says there was no death till Adam sinned. Your textbook says dinosaurs died before man got here. Somebody is seriously wrong. And we're going to discuss today who it is. In the last session, we talked about how what the Garden of Eden was like. The Bible says when God made the world, He said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. There used to be a layer of water above the atmosphere. Some people think it was ice. I don't know if it's solid, liquid, or gas. I don't know. Water comes in three flavors. But somehow there was water up there. How it was up there, I don't know. The Bible says it was, and I believe that. I think there are some reasonable theories of how it might have been up there. It could have been ice suspended by the magnetic field of the earth. That's one theory. But the Bible says there was water above the firmament. Also, the Bible says most of the water that's now in the oceans used to be under the crust of the earth. If you read Psalm 24, it says, The earth is the Lord's. He founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Psalm 136, He stretched out the earth above the waters. Most of the water that's now on the surface, oceans, used to be in the crust. Big subterranean water chambers. I think when Adam and Eve were here, the world was mostly land and a small percentage of water. Today, it's 70% water and mostly land. And even that land that we have is only 3% habitable for mankind. 3% of the world's surface is habitable for mankind. Most of it's ice caps, deserts, under, underwater. God designed it to be inhabited. What we see today is a junkyard compared to what Adam and Eve saw. So there was water under the crust of the earth. That water that's under, that used to be under the crust came shooting to the surface when the fountains of the deep broke open. So from the creation up until the flood, things were very different. During that time, everything lived over 900 years. You could learn a lot in 900 years. Did you know that Adam spoke every language in the world? Well, there was only one, but he spoke it, okay? Now, <laughs> reptiles never stop growing. It's just a simple biological fact. Reptiles grow all their life. People stop growing. When you're 16 or 18, you're going to quit growing, at least uh, vertically. Some go horizontally afterwards, but reptiles never stop growing. Now, what would happen to a reptile if you put him in the Garden of Eden and let him live to be 900 years old? You'd have a big lizard. A really big lizard. Dinosaurs were giant reptiles that lived with Adam and Eve before the flood. They did not live millions of years ago. They were pre-flood, not prehistoric. So if this is all true, did Noah take dinosaurs on the ark? They asked Billy Graham, were there dinosaurs on Noah's ark? 
He said, no, apparently not. Noah's Ark did not include dinosaurs because they were extinct before man got here. Oh, Billy, now you got death before sin. I love Billy Graham. Praise God for the good he's done. But folks, he's wrong about that one. Dinosaurs on the ark. Man, I hope, hope he kept the woodpeckers in a steel cage of some kind. <laughs> some people say, <clears throat> what do you mean dinosaurs on the ark? They're kind of big, aren't they? Well, the big ones were big, but the little ones were little. And Noah was 600 years old when he built that boat. I just bet he was smart enough to figure out, you don't have to bring the biggest ones you can find. Bring two babies. Mm -hmm. Just be sure to get a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later. Uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of reasons for bringing babies on the ark. You bring babies because they're smaller. Oh, duh. You know, the biggest dinosaur egg ever found is smaller than a football. You bring babies because they weigh less. They eat less. They sleep a lot more. They're tougher. You know, kids fall down and bounce and get up and keep running. Adults fall down and break or lay there for a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus you bring babies because after the flood, they're going to live longer to produce more offspring. And that's why you're bringing them. So it makes common sense to bring babies. Why would you bring big elephants on the ark? Why bring big giraffes? Bring babies. Hello. Plus you only had to bring two of every sort. Not two of every single variety. Just two of the basic kinds of animals. He said in Genesis 7, bring them after their kind, after their kind, after their kind, after their kind. I mean, the Bible's pretty clear. There was the basic kinds of animals and only those in whose nostrils was the breath of life. And only those on dry land. Noah did not have to bring any fish on the ark. They had plenty of water outside. <laughs> he also didn't have to bring any bugs on the ark because bugs don't have nostrils. They breathe through their skin, through spiracles. Hey, bugs can survive a flood just fine on floating log mats or floating dead carcasses or something or burrow in the mud. Go any place where there's been a flood, after the water runs off, walk out into the mud and tell me the first thing you notice. Bugs by the gazillions, right? Noah brought two of the basic kinds of animals on the ark. Noah probably never saw a chihuahua in his life. <laughs> he just brought generic dogs like our dog Nicky. We had Nikki for 12 years before we even knew what kind he was. <laughs> a friend of mine came to my house one day and he said, Oh, hey, Brother Hovind, you got a canardly. I said, A what? He said, Your dog, that's a canardly. I said, Really? He said, Yeah, look at it. You can hardly tell what kind of dog it is. <laughs> I mean, if you have a full blooded canardly at home, there we go. <laughs> So just generic animals. This Mexican textbook says the horse and the zebra had a common ancestor. I agree. And it looked like a horse. Four-wheel drive, genuine leather upholstery, all the standard equipment. You know, it was a horse kind of animal. So the basic kinds that were on the ark, not every species. Skeptics will say, how did he fit those millions of animals on that little bitty boat? Well, now, hold on just a minute. He only brought the land animals, okay? Bring those with nostrils, no bugs. Bring babies, that's common sense. Bring two of each kind, not every single species or variety. Plus, uh, how many were there? Many experts will tell you there are about 8,000 basic kinds of animals in the world. Just basic kinds of animals. Now, I talk pretty fast. I can get going 300 words a minute when I get excited. But did you know if you just talk 60 words per minute, you can name all 8,000 animals in a little over two hours. Some people say, Adam couldn't name all the animals in one day. Are you kidding? You can name them in about an hour. Dog kind, cat kind, hippo kind, giraffe kind, elephant kind. <laughs> Plus Adam had an IQ of who knows what. I mean, he came pre-programmed straight from the hand of God. He could walk, talk, name the animals and get married all first day. <laughs> really smart fella, okay. Plus, uh, how big was the ark? The atheist will say, he couldn't put those animals on the ark. And I say, really, how many were there? They say, we don't know. Oh, well, how big was the ark? They'll say, well, we don't know. All we know is he couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, I see. Is that the way this works? Yeah. Well, beats what they believe. They believe 18 or 20 billion years ago, nothing exploded in the Big Bang and made everything. Mm -hmm. And then 4.6 billion years ago, the Earth cooled down and a rocky surface was created. Yes, boys and girls, the planet Earth cooled and a rocky surface was created. This is what the textbooks teach. And as Earth formed, it was like the moon. It was hot and there were large pools of bubbling lava. But slowly, rocks absorb the oxygen. Notice this textbook says, the percentage of oxygen was zero, but the rocks absorbed it. <laughs> I wondered about that when I said, it's a college textbook. Yeah, there was nothing there, but they absorbed it all right. Yeah. 
So the rocks absorbed the oxygen, and then it began to rain on the rocks. Oh, man, oceans formed as it rained for millions of years. Millions of years of torrential rains created great oceans. And swirling in the waters of the oceans is a bubbling broth of complex chemicals. Progress from a complex chemical soup to a living organism is very slow. Boy, I guess it is. It's totally stopped. Doesn't even happen. That's how slow it is. This book says, The first self-replicating systems must have emerged in this organic soup. So their theory says, 20 billion years ago, Big Bang, 4.6 billion years ago, the earth cooled down. It rained on the rocks for millions of years, turned them into soup, and the soup came alive 3 billion years ago. And that first life form found somebody to marry. <laughs> now there's a good trick. <laughs> and something to eat, of course, and slowly evolved into everything we see today. So great, 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 great grandpa was soup. They asked me to speak at this college in Boston one time. They said, you can speak to our students if our 